Let's go to Green Street. Miss Reed, I... Well, nice to see you again. Green Street is shocked to see me here. It's written all over his face. I don't suppose you brought your fee for passage that we spoke about earlier. I don't have it, but who knows? Perhaps I'll find an investor here at the manor. If any woman could put it off, I'll put my chips on you, Miss Reed. I'll cut to the chase, Green Street. There's a certain item I've been looking for. Something I believe is of interest to both of us. To us both. Right, of course. The pate is on the table over by the window there. Not to be missed, I guess. Faster talker, this one. I had an easier time pinning down a bird on the wing. You were witness, you were witness, slinking out of Lord Braxton's private rooms with a portfolio hidden under your coat. That's giving him pause. The depth of your paranoia is something, Reed, but the fact of a simpler fur trap like myself getting turned around in a sprawling mansion like this isn't much grounds for a conspiracy. No doubt about it. The portfolio is a is on his person and the diagrams within. Ugh. <gasps> yes! Hold your tongue a moment. I have a buyer for those diagrams you nicked. Just hand them over and I'll cut you in later. Is that it? Is that right? Well, at least you're finally talking some sense. He looks ready to hand them over, but draws back at the last second. And there's just one thing. A little bit of insurance for you waltz off with your prize. Say two pounds. Give it to him. Thanks much, Miss Reed. I'll be looking forward to our next transaction. It's written all over your face, Miss Reeve. You've been searching for the diagrams here at the manor, have you not? What news do you bring? Though normally impossible to read, Iron Bear cannot keep the tremor from his voice. I have the diagrams. Here they are in all their glory. Iron Bear accepts the stiff bind papers with an almost religious reverence. He scans them hungrily to confirm their content and hastily hides them away again. I don't expect that you're familiar with our struggles against the Republic of Texas, but I gained this at the Battle of Plum Creek. He traces the scar on his cheek with one finger. What I lost was a brother and many more fellows of my tribe. The Texas Rangers and their allies attacked us in revenge for the great raid launched on the Chief Buffalo Hump, which in turn was revenge for the hateful treachery against our peaceful delegation. It sounds like a full-scale war. A raid begets vengeance, and vengeance begets massacre. But this technology, this repeating rifle of, of Braxton, will finally cut break the chain. The Comanche will recover their security, their dignity. You have my deepest gratitude, Clara, and the gratitude of the Comanche nation. Think nothing of it. I shall not linger here much longer. My mission is complete. Goodbye, Miss Reed. Goodbye, Iron Bear. Good luck. I don't think we have anything to cut him in with so let's go to the butler is there something I can help you with I'm looking for another guest I wonder if you might help me find Zora Levick oh yes the woman in the love the woman in the lovely black dress I do believe she ventured into the back gardens for a bit of fresh air the back gardens thank you my pleasure madam what a nice man. Oh, let's go to the piano because I wanted to get her to do that as well. Oh my, here's a piece. I wouldn't mind having one for my own. Now all I need is a ballroom to go with it. I guess we can talk to a safe. Why is the fan the top thing right now? No, that's, there we go. Oh, sure. Lady Braxton. 
approaching the lady of the house is somewhat difficult. Not for any great crowd modeling about her, but for the unsteadiness in her stance. It's a genuine concern whether she might actually topple if approached from the wrong angle and forced to turn in unexpected direction. Maggie, come girl. I need a, ref a refresh. Pardon me. I think you're mistaking me for someone else. My name is Clara Reed. We met earlier this evening. Cl <gasps> Clara? Where have Maggie gone off to? It's so hard to find good help. This is a fantastic woman you have on display. Where might I ask did, did it come from? She blinks twice, slowly, trying to focus her eyes on me, most unbecoming. Why am I dearest Clara? As you well know, my illustrious husband, when he is not working, whoring, or otherwise ignoring his matrimonial duties, she sways. Where was I? You were telling me where the mummy was, was procured. Oh yes, my husband has many important connections, you know. Along them, among them, Sir Flinders Petrus, let us Petrus, famed British Egyptologist, Egyptologist, Egyptologist. Let me just say that when we require a mummy, we get one. I wonder if that sentence has ever been spoken before. And before you <laughs> ask, no, I do not put stock in those silly superstitions of a curse. Ghastly and depraved, not worthy of mention. She leans forward, eyes wide. It's clear she wishes to further discuss the curse in question. You mentioned a curse? Her whole face lights up. She has likely been waiting for waiting the entire evening to find someone to discuss this with. Oh yes, a most a most dreadful thing that is. Ladies of upstanding moral fiber should not concern with themselves with such. She leans in conspiratorially. There is a distinct possibility she might fall, even the given the angle. But just between you and I, there's a delicious rumor that this mummy coffin had a warning on it in, e in Egyptian. All who violate my tomb shall be cursed forevermore. Cursed? Can you imagine? I can, in fact. I knew a priestess of Hectate once who was killed in such things, but it's best to let her have her fun. Scandalous! And that very mummy here at the party? Are we all cursed then? Oh, could you imagine? Someone might get injured or catch a light. Her balance teeters and she almost stumbles in a nearby candle stand. Thank you for your... Mm. Do you know anything else about the curse? Has anyone involved the mummy's excavation encountered bad luck? Lady Br Braxton makes as if to whisper, only she forgets to lower her voice. Keep this just between us ladies, but I hear the ship carrying the mummy here was lost at sea with the whole crew and all their cargo. That's terrible, all those drowned men. Thankfully, the mummy was recovered, despite the setback. What an awful ordeal. It does make for quite the story though. Oh yes, the captain told me as much. Would you believe it? He floated to the shore, clutching tightly to the casket. Did he now? Showed me the payout from the royal exchange and everything. Naturally, given his bravery, I paid extra upon delivery. Let it not be said that I am heartless. Seriously? The extra cost and a captain transporting contraband goods sound like somebody I know. Indeed, Green Street. Likely a coincidence, but even so, I might want to ask him, ask him about it. I wonder what is more difficult to acquire in London, the forgery of passports or an insurance claim? Regardless, best to leave it at Best to leave it be. She seems content with the story she's got out of it. Thank you for your time, Lady Black Braxton. Charmed as <laughs> charmed, I'm sure. Back to Green Street. Green Street, you have a lot going on, my guy. That's it. He's clammed up. Son of a gun. Go to the front drive. The man moves with a life of his own. I think I read all this. Yeah.
front garden. Gurning the, the fact spotted someone's paper get docked once large Braxton learns of this. There's bench. I know she's in the garden somewhere. A place to rest and take in the scenery. Don't see much of that in London. Arsenal Century. Interesting. It isn't exactly lifelike, but it certainly is intimidating. Passage denied. You may take the path to the guest house if you are a guest. I am not able to discern if you are a guest. Sure. You're going to be drenched, my dear. Can't go there. So we're in the front gardens. Let's save really quick. Oh, I'm not gonna go do that again. There must be a way outside of this. All right, yeah, let's go back in the manor and then Obviously, there's a back way. But there is a sentry, which is crazy. Let's see. Oh, yep. Go to the back gardens. If Zora is involved in the murder, so I have to confront her. If I leave the part, I may not have the opportunity to come back. Let's wait. Just want to make sure. I don't. I really don't think there is anything else here. We talked to Tenor, Butler. Nothing. So you're really serious, Clay. We can't talk to you again. That's fine. You know what, Tessica? Why? Might as well. Oh, no, we can't talk to her now about the bounty. I guess we're going in the back gardens. Head outside. The manor moves to the life of its own. Oh yeah, this is the same one from last time. There she goes. There's Zora. I better speak to her while I have the chance. 
Oh, Clara, I was sure we'd run into each other. Madam Zora, may I have a moment of your time? Whatever it is, I have to wait. I must return inside. I'm afraid it can't wait. It's imperative that I speak with you. Now it's not a good time. I'm quite busy. I need to speak with you about Ivana Arseni. The mention of Ivana's name appears to have piqued her interest. Her brows knit with uncertainty, her eyes starting around to see if anyone overhears. Have you any idea where Ivana is right now? Somehow, Ivana Arseni is the key of all this. In truth, I have planned to meet her here. Surely you won't mind if I tag along. Perhaps the three of us could have a discussion. No, Miss Reed, I'm afraid that's out the question. Then perhaps you could speak with me before she arrives. Very well, Miss Reed. What would you like to ask? Would you, what would you have of me? Why did you not tell me that Ivana was your cousin? In a business where kissing and telling is the kiss of death, it seems only sensible to keep hitting that I am related to a, a journalist, Miss Reed. Keep it from your, our clients, perhaps. But why would you need to hide such a thing from your workers? And why would you suppose it is any of your business? While we're a family, our relationship is a long and rather complicated story. Perhaps it's best if she looks off suddenly to the side. Hello, Zora. Miss Reed. Heavens above, is that Ivana? Ivana, how on earth did you get... I was just about to come speak with you. The impersonable Zora. I did not realize she was Ivana was a werewolf was a lichen throat. The personable Zora I spoke with is gone, her haughty professional demeanor returning with haste. You know, being a journalist has its advantages. The opulently wealthy do love fluff pieces on their events. Ivana seems in quite a hurry, tension evident in her every step. It's hard to see the half light, but Clara, I'm sorry to pull Zora away, but she and I have matters to discuss. There's a, light, a lupine hunch in her shoulders, and no one could ignore the fur patches on her face. A partial transformation. Transformation. Then it's true, Ivana is a werewolf. I prefer to come along. Madame Zora and I were just discussing. I assure you, the privacy is not for me, but for Zora. Unless she would prefer to have this discussion in front of Miss Reed. Very well, I. Very well, Ivy. Lead the way. Ivana leaves as quickly as she came. You will wait here if you ever you you will wait here if you have any understanding of what's good for you or any regard for the safety of your person. I need to speak with Ivana alone. I have never seen her this disquieted. Now goodbye, Miss Reed. Enjoy the rest of the part in our stead, won't you? God's teeth I can't simply let them wander off. Regardless of the killer's true identity, those two are vital players in my investigation. Then I can't allow them to waltz off in the night. I can still catch up if I make haste. 